Hi folks, Rodney Kellum here. I want to take a couple minutes and, and kind of talk about a couple different bikes here. I've had some great questions from videos here recently and I thought, well, well this would be a great opportunity to just kind of make a video about it, maybe answer some questions and maybe some other people are having as well. I'm gonna flip the camera around here and we're gonna talk about the bikes. So I have two different bikes here. This is a 2019 YZ450 FX. This one is a 2021 KTM 350 XCF. And so I've had questions on both sides. You know, what's the perfect bike? Um, I'm gonna maybe ask yourself a couple of questions here. And maybe that will help kind of figure out what, what's the right bike for you. How are you gonna use the bike? Um, some people say that, you know, if you're looking at the woods and these are both, uh, you know, XCF, which is cross country and the YZ450FX, which is cross country as well. Uh, they are they are complete race bikes, but they're designed for a closed course. Uh, so, you know, they're great in two different opportunities or two different situations, I would say. Uh, the YZ450FX by far is faster. Um, you know, some people say that, well, with a 350, you know, you can get almost as much horsepower, which is true. On the top end, if you're running it wide open, you can get about 49 horsepower out of the 350. This uh, is stock 53 horsepower and the torque is what really comes into play. And so obviously torque uh, is going to get that, get that vehicle or a bike in motion. Uh, and then horsepower is what's going to just get, kind of it to excel. So with the Yamaha, it has what they call the, the Yamaha power tuner app. So you can go in there and you can actually physically, you know, adjust the, the mapping on the bike uh, from a smartphone. The KTM just recently come out with this, and I've done another video on it as well, what they call a, a KTM connectivity unit. And so you can also go in uh, on a phone app and go in there and, and kind of uh, adjust it the way you want. But there's, there's really a huge variance on what you can actually do with them. So with the YZ, you have the ability to go in there and set the mapping exactly the way you want it. Now there's a bunch of uh, bunch of different testing that they've done where other people have created maps and Travis Preston is, is one of the biggest proponents for that, uh, but he does a lot of testing for Yamaha. So he's gone in and designed some maps. Um, Kiefer has done some maps as well, uh, but there's a lot of people out there sharing different maps. So the benefit on the YZ is that you have the ability, it's like having numerous bikes in your arsenal. Uh, where the KTM, you have you have a map, and I, I say a map, um, a stocking comes with two units, or excuse, let me back up. Stock comes with two maps. You have a uh, more torquey map, and then you have a more aggressive map. But with the KTM connectivity unit and the My KTM app, you can go in there and you can address, you can address uh, the type of uh, writing conditions you're going to be doing. So, for instance, you have sand you have gravel and you have hard pack from what i see the hard pack and the the sand is basically the same map uh, but then you have the ability to go in there and and um, you know set your throttle response uh, whether it be very mild to aggressive and then you can also adjust the engine braking and then also the traction control one thing i had a real issue with on this 350 when i first got it is that it has a lot of engine braking and in comparison to the 450, this probably has three times as much engine braking as what the, the YZ does. The funny thing is that no matter how I've adjusted any of the maps on the YZ, it's never really seemed to have affected the, the engine braking. So I'm not quite sure how KTM is going in there and doing it. It has to be something to do with the fuel and the timing. Um, but somehow they've managed to eliminate a good portion of that engine braking just from the adjustment on the, on the smartphone app. Um, so anyway, uh, this is much more user friendly when it comes to using the smartphone app. The YZ is much more, uh, I should say you have the ability to manage so much more with it and it totally takes it from being a very mild to very wild bike. And you can see that in a lot of the videos that are out there. This pretty much just uses the same mapping that it already has, but it, it kind of increases your throttle response. And then, like I said, you can you can uh, reduce the engine braking. So, like I said, two totally different aspects. Um, eliminating the engine braking was a huge plus, and so I, I give them props for that. 
uh, but they say that there's more benefits coming later in the future, so we'll see what happens there. All right. Now, let's talk about the bike itself. So, the bike itself, um, I haven't checked recent pricing. This is a 2019, and I want to say that the recent pricing is probably somewhere around $10,300. Um, you're looking on the, the 350 was ten nine, dollars uh, and you're going to be very close to that. Uh, with the 450, I'm sure. Uh, so you are spending more money on the KTM to begin with. Uh, obviously, there is some benefits that you're picking up. Uh, you're picking up things like the Brembo brakes. Uh, you got the the Brembo uh, hydraulic clutch. Um, you know the the gearbox seems to shift a little bit easier on the KTM than what it does on the YZ. Um, but there's also some trade-offs. So. The YZ, by far, having the KYB suspension is hands down much better. It's actually the best production suspension on the market. Um, KTM goes to a, an AER48 fork, and it's an air suspension on the front. Uh, I know they do it for many different reasons. Some people say it's to make it lighter, which it is. It's truly lighter. Uh, but the other hand is it, it fits a more vast, or I should say a broader range of riders. So... With that, that's with the air, you go ahead and set your air uh, is, is your spring. Your, excuse me, your air becomes your spring, and then obviously you have uh, another cartridge to go ahead and re do uh, dampening and whatnot. Um, I've never been a big fan or proponent for the air. It seems like you chase all the time having to set the air to uh, deep, get the ride comfort that you're looking for. Uh, and then the problem is you go out and ride for two to three hours, and then it's changed the air pressure inside the cartridge and it doesn't ride the same as what it did to begin with. The biggest thing that I didn't care for is that it had a huge issue with not having great front end traction. So I wanted to get something that was very similar to what the KYB and so I started to go to a KYB spring fork conversion and then after talking with Brian down in Into Dirt down in California there, he said that uh, they actually make a what they call Del Sagio Sphere, which I had actually already been doing some research on. And he says it's actually better. Um, I would say yes, it probably is better in certain circumstances. Uh, and I'll give you an example. So for me, riding in the woods, the Del Sagio Spheres uh, are a lot more plush. Um, you have 38 different clickers, where normally you have about 24. But you have your adjustment here. And then you also have another adjustment here. And they're very simple, very easy to do. Um, you know, just pull over to the side and just make a couple quick adjustments. And then, of course, with the KYB, you have your adjustment here that you have to get a screwdriver out and readjust it. So not a big deal either way. Um, but like I said, the Del Sagio is much more plush. Now... One thing I was really surprised about is with the Del Sagio spheres, they have amazing uh, bottoming resistance. So it would be very plush. They probably give up a little bit in the mid mid valve or mid stroke there. Um, but you know, it's great bottoming resistance. Uh, you know, it's very plush. And then of course, if you're hitting stuff harder and faster, you can obviously adjust it because you got a huge array of adjustments on it. Um, I would say that on the KYB, it's probably a I would say probably a racier suspension, and what I mean by that is it's going to be firmer to begin with, um, but yet when you start hitting big like braking bumps and sorry for, sorry for the jet there we have we're next to an airport um, when you start hitting braking bumps and you're hitting uh, you know like some holes. Uh, you know, at a faster pace or rocks or roots, this tends to soak it up a little bit better when you're hitting things fast. And so it's trade-off. Like I said, they both have their, their benefits. Um, if you wanted to race motocross, you can set up the Del Sagio Spears, more designed for the motocross, um, but it's probably more, leans a little bit more towards the enduro type. Let's talk about some of the things that we've kind of done to the bike. Um, you know, and things that you want to do to the bike to kind of get it prepared and ready to race. Um, as KTM says, they are ready to race as it is. Um, there again, a lot of people are going to address the suspension before they do anything. The rear shock is actually really good. I never missed, I had a KTM 250 XC 
It was a 2019 model. I never messed with the rear shock, never had any issues with it, uh, and I've not had any issues with this. They have said that they've uh, changed the SKF seal in there, and so it seems more plush, and I would agree with that. It definitely seems more plush than what it did on my, my 250. Um, but I've also gone through and I've put in a linkage. And so I don't know if you can see it down there, uh, but factory connection linkage obviously changes the, the geometry of your little triangle linkage there. And it gives it a more plush ride. It also helps in braking bumps uh, and gives you better rear, rear wheel traction. So I've done that. Uh, I always like to go and put uh, ASV levers on there. They're unbreakable. I bent one of the factory levers as soon as I got it. And so I knew I had to do something pretty quick. Um, but other than that, it's really it's just about ready to race. Uh, when you're riding in the woods, you have to have a, a spark arrestor, so I had to change the exhaust. And due to COVID times, funny thing is I couldn't find a slip-on anywhere, so I had to go to a full system. And so I went to the, the Yoshimura uh, R12S, and I actually really like it. It makes it sound very throaty. Um, I didn't ride, I didn't use the other system, the full system that came from the factory. I didn't use that at all, so I can't really compare it. Uh, but I've been very happy with that, and it just performs really well I did put an FMF slip on on here obviously I did it because I had to have the spark arrestor and the stock exhaust doesn't sound very good on these uh, and that was another big reason I changed as well uh, obviously you can see that I put some graphics on both of the bikes more of a personal touch than anything else um, but other than that you know I have not done a lot to them um, they've you know, somebody's asked me, well, what about the dependability? You know, would you prefer the KTM over the Yamaha? Well, the Yamaha dependability and reliability is second to none. Uh, and you can get, you can find that anywhere. Anybody will tell you the same thing. I've never had any issues with my KTM, so I can't say what the reliability is going to be on that aspect as well. Um, but I would assume that it's probably, if I was to compare the two, I would give the, the nod to the, the Yamaha. Uh, it comes up often, well, the KTM is a lot lighter. Yes, the KTM is lighter, and you can definitely feel it. Um, but the funny thing is that I noticed this when I had a I had a Honda CRF 450RX. The RX, even though it was about as heavy as the YZ, uh, both of these bikes, depending on how you've got them mapped, feel lighter than what the KTM does in certain circumstances. So, obviously, when you can crack the throttle and you get that sudden burst and it, it just kind of throws the bike in the direction you want it uh, it makes it feel a lot more light a lot more nimble um, than than what the ktm is and that's one of the things that i've heard many people say is that the ktm because it revs slow to begin with and most of your power is up top uh, almost makes it feel a little bit heavier than what it actually is so something to kind of keep in mind um, another benefit on the yz is that straight from the factory, the suspension is so balanced and you can tell that as soon as you start riding it. To get on the bike, if I was just to like move the bike around this way, you know, and do the same thing here, this one feels way lighter. Um, but you get out there and you start riding a little bit and because it's so balanced so well, it feels a lot lighter than what it actually is. Um, the other thing too, um, I uh, apologize, I lost my train. Oh, I started to talk about the gas tank. So I had a Honda CRF 450RX, and one of the things I did not like about that bike is the gas tank. The, the gas tank was kind of up here, and because it was a larger tank, it had an overflow up here. Uh, here, your tank is right here and sits down here. And so they talk about lowering the center of gravity, and that has a lot to do with the kind of the rear-facing motor. Um, but it, everything's compact, everything's kind of down low, and you can truly feel that when you get out there and start riding it. Uh, the YZ, um, a lot of people say it doesn't corner as well as some of the other bikes. Well, you're right. KTM does corner a little bit better. And I think a lot of that has to do with how light they feel. Um, but this actually corners pretty well. I have no complaints about the way it corners. And like I said, because it's so balanced, it just it, it seems, seems a lot lighter than what it actually is. Um, I don't know if that's answered everybody's questions, but you know, the question comes out, well, if you had to pick one bike, which would you pick? And there, there again, that's gonna come down to how do you ride the bike? 
if I was riding the 350 like open desert uh, or something that's a lot more open and it flows a lot better I would probably probably go with the KTM um, but on the other hand if you're talking about stuff that has some tight technical situations in it um, and is more open um, I would probably lean towards the YZ now like I said the YZ feels a lot lighter than what it actually is the KTM uh, is a little slower revving um, and the funny on the 350 it, it seems a little little light on the bottom it seems a little more 250 ish compared to the the 450 that I have um, but then when it hits it seems to actually rev quicker and pick up more top end pretty fast and so you know in the woods if you're not if you're not uh, you know coming to a complete stop and then having to take off every time you know because you're cornering uh, if you can just kind of keep momentum up and keep things flowing the the 350 is a great bike and and I'm sure that the 450 would be the same so you know give and take on both bikes they're both awesome bikes uh, no matter which one you pick you're not going to go wrong uh, and you're going to be happy with both um, but like I said if you do go with a KTM definitely look into the KTM connectivity unit uh, because being able to take the engine braking out of it and adjust your uh, throttle response will be huge because you can monitor how you want and then like I said with the Yamaha power tuner app if you end up going that route uh, be sure and try out some of the other maps that other people have come up with and then take something that's very close to what you want and then go in there and make some fine adjustments and get it to, to uh, set up to be exactly the way you want it and you'll be extremely happy. If you guys have any questions feel free to, uh, to send me a comment Take the time to like and, and subscribe. Um, obviously, I don't. You can see how many how many uh, subscribers I have. I'm not getting any monetary. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not monetized by any means. So I'm not doing this for money. Uh, I am doing it for the passion. I love to ride dirt bikes, and I know there's other people out there just like myself that are always looking for information and would like to make their bikes better. So if this helps anybody, please, like I said, take the time to to share it with somebody else. And then, like I said, send me a comment. Let me know how I can help. And I'm always happy to share my information. Thanks.